Good evening. Good evening, sir. Welcome um, to the video conference of this um, class. We are going to start in some minutes. Um, I'm just setting some things here before to start the video conference, okay? Vision, I will be back. I, I, I'll be back, okay? Sorry. Okay, thank you.
Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm seeing that Miss Gomez, Mr. Carlos, and Miss Galdames, and also Mr. Torres are connected right now. We are just five people. And we're going to start with uh, the class. Uh, good evening for everyone. Um, well, yesterday we were discussing about a specific topic. I don't know if you remember the topic. You remember the topic? You remember the activity we were developing yesterday? Uh, yes, yes, teacher. Yes. Um, okay. Come in. In, in fact, uh, I after the, the class, I was trying to complete the exercise 3.2. Mm -hmm. And and I have a, a lot of trouble with that. I, I tried to do just uh, like we saw in class, but but I couldn't. I just uh, match two of the sentences. OK, let's see. Um... Well, let, let, let's review a uh, part of those exercises. Can you tell me the number uh, where those exercises uh, are in this case? Excuse me, I, I didn't uh, understand. What okay, did you can say? You, can you tell me the number of the exercise you, that you are referring to? The number. number 3.2. Number 3.2. 3. Three point two. Okay, let, let's check. Uh, well, here we have the instruction. Now let's check. It says, uh, read the following sentences, identify the relative clause, then rewrite the same sentences and add commas where, nece where it's necessary. Uh, remember capital letters and periods. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, oh, okay. In this case, you must uh, modify the relative clause. Um, you have to um, add commas where it's necessary. Okay, let's see. tell me uh, what. Is, tell me one of those uh, sentences that you haven't completed yet. I just hit uh, the first one and the last one. The but, other ones I failed. Okay, but tell me one that you haven't completed. Okay, uh, the first one, uh, Bangkok, which is the capital of Thailand. But you told me that you saw that. I, I, I'm referring to the ones that you have not complete yet. Okay, I, I, I failed in the second one. Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997 oh, when it was returned to China. Okay, very good. Uh, in that case, um, do you identify what is the relative clause? I thought the, the relative uh, clause is when it was returned to China until 1997. Okay, and what do you think? It is defining or uh, undefining relative clause? Or not defining relative clause? Mm. It is defining the... the uh, yeah, I, I guess it is it, not defining. It's not defining. That's mean mm -hmm. uh, no defining relative clause. Okay, very good. So in this case, what uh, tell us the rule? What do we have to add? I don't know. I, I just try to, to put the, the relative clause between commas. Between because commas. if I if I uh, drop that part of the sentence, uh, the sentence uh, could be could have a uh, sense. Mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. In this case, let me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to show you um, the video first. I'm going to show you the the, the the video, and then you are going to tell me the answer. Um, just give okay. me a sec. Okay, we're going to try to solve this exercise. Okay, here, here, and here. Okay. 
Just let me show you something here and here. Can you can you see my screen? Yes, yes teacher. Okay, very good. So um, as we know, we were talk we were discussing just yesterday about defining and no defining relative clauses. In this case, you said that it's a non-defining relative clause. It, when we have a non-defining relative clause, we have two options in order to complete that sentence. It, as you know, um, the instruction says that if we have a non-defining relative clause, we have to add the comma, okay? If it is needed, if it, it is needed, okay? So in this case, you uh, told me you told me that the last part of that sentence is the relative clause. What do we have to do? Well, we are going to rewrite the sentence, the complete sentence, uh -huh. and then we are going to add the comma. Okay, check it okay. out the example number two that, that I have here. Um, we have, there are many templates in Chirons in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Do you use it in that way, like comma, which do you use in no. this way? No. No, no. I, I put the relative clause between commas, but I between didn't commas. try with with an only comma. Mm, okay, okay. The the thing here, sir, is that uh, we have to uh, keep the sentence as it is. Okay, in the number two, we have to keep it in, in the same way. What we have to do is just add the commas if it is needed. In this case, we are going to uh, add a comma uh, before the relative clause, and then we are going to add the period. Try to do it that way. Let's see what happened. Okay, okay. Okay, it is correct in, in that way, but I guess I I, I haven't uh, gotten the the correct way to to use relative clauses. Okay, okay. Let, let me explain you uh, a little bit of it right now. Uh, when we have defining relative clauses, is because the information that uh, we have is essential. What does it mean? Uh, okay, the information that we have complement the uh, first sentence that we have. In this case, check it out the examples that we have that, that we have here. New Orleans is a city. Okay, that's this, that's the first sentence where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Um, what happened there? In that sentence, we are adding information that is essential. Why? because we are ex explaining um, a little bit what are we talking about the uh, city in this case. Uh, the same happened in the, in the examples of number two that it says Salvador is famous for food and music, okay? That trace their origins to Africa. If you notice there, this is an information that is needed, it's essential, okay? Because it's defining uh, something. In the case of the non-defining relative clauses, um, this information, it's no needed because it's optional. It's like an extra information that we are using. Uh, why? Because the sentence without that relative clause uh, is complete, okay? It's complete. When I say it's complete, that's mean that we don't need that information in order to understand that what we are trying to say. I don't know if you get that part, sir. So about the essential information and also um, and also the optional information. The thing is in, in, in the examples for for uh, defining relative clauses, um, the 
two parts of the sentence are complementing each other. But in the non-defining relative clauses, you can you can omit some some uh, the relative clause. Yes, yes. Uh, the the thing here is that it can be omitted, but the information is not complete. That that's what I mean. Okay, you, you have a sentence, and also you have a relative clause. Uh, that's mean that in the defining relative clause, the information. It's neither in order to understand what you are saying, okay? It's like adding um, extra information, like an adjective uh, or like um, uh, uh, an information that you want to describe about a specific thing. Uh, in the case of the non-defining, that's an information that doesn't match what you are uh, saying, uh, in that sense, I mean that you don't need that information in order to understand what you're saying. Because in the, in the, in the first example, it says Seoul, which hosts the 1988 Summer Olympics, is well known for its shopping. That's not what we what we want to say. That's an extra information that we are using about Seoul. Okay. Uh, in this case, what we want to say is that Seoul is well known for its shopping. That's what we want to say. That's the information that, that we need. The rest, the, the, the part that is in boat, that is the relative clause, eh, is something that we want to add eh, just because uh, maybe we have a reason like um, trying to eh, explain better but it's uh, no needed information. Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I don't know if it's clear, sir, uh, because if not, I will try to do it in a, in a different way. I guess I guess uh, I got it, and I'm going to try to do the the third. Uh, the example exercise? number three. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, try to do it. And, okay, thank and, you. and then, and then uh, tell me if you uh, if you have it correct or not. Okay. Um. Anyone else has any other uh, question? I do, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Miss. Uh, tell me. I can get the fourth one in the in the same exercise three point two, but I have tried many times. But I think it's right, but it doesn't match with the platform. Okay, let me let me see what's the reason of it. Okay, uh, okay, I got it. Uh, tell me your answer, Miss. Okay, I got a Bogota comma, which is situated on a high plateau <laughs> in Central okay. Colombia, comma, has frequently changing well. Okay, uh, here we have the problem. Your sentence is correct. Okay, that's correct. Uh -huh. uh, but the problem here is that we have uh, a mistake in the sentence. This mistake it's in the platform, not, not yours. Um, because after Bogota, we have a comma, right? Then no. we need a space. That space is submitted in the platform. That means that you have to join that word in order to in order to have your sentence correct, uh, like Bogota comma with all space, with all space, which is situated in on a, and then you write in the rest. Try to do it in that way. I don't know if you okay. uh, you, um, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, okay, you said Bogota comma no space which is situated. Yes, but no. Still, it's, it is a still wrong. Uh, teacher, teacher, good evening. I try, I tried the way that you said, and that's correct. You it, try to. Can you, Miss Galdanos? Uh -huh. Can you, can you please just? Uh, I see the. I can see the mistake. Let me. Let me try. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. That's fine. Okay, very good. That, that's that's no your, your mistake, Miss, because your sentence is correct. 
The problem mm -hmm. here is the platform, okay? So uh, okay. I will try to notify that problem to uh, the, the technical support in order to solve it. Uh, but okay. if you have that sent in that way, please try to complete it in, in the way that I said. Um, okay. okay, thank you. Do you have any other question? Mr. Torres, Ms. Garcia, Ms. Peraza? No, teacher. No. No. No questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Hernandez, questions? No. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to continue uh, in the same line that we were discussing yesterday about the relative clauses, uh, defining and no defining relative clauses. And we are going to develop a topic uh, that, it, that has as a as a title, what makes a city? Let me let me just um, show you this video, and then we're going to uh, discuss about about this. Okay, just give me a second. I will share my screen here. Hi. Okay, can you hear that? Yes, just yes, yes, teacher. Okay, I'm going to play this video. Uh, the title of this video is What Makes a City? Uh, please pay attention because then I'm going to be uh, asking some questions about it. Hi, let's go over some words which will help you talk a little bit about your city. Describing a city, architecture, cuisine, costumes, festival, historical sites, nightlife, scenery, shopping. What are some important features for you? Talk to your class. Sorry, I'm going to play the game because of the resolutions. Um, I saw that. Hi, let's go over some words. Which you... Sorry, I saw that wasn't clear. I'm going to play that again. You know that, uh, that you have your... To help you talk a little bit about your city. Describing a city. Ar architecture, cuisine, costumes, festival historical sites, nightlife, scenery, shopping. What are some important features for you? Talk to your class. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, work on this. Uh, in this part, um, in, in what's make a city, um, well, we are referring to um, all the things that we have in this list, like arch architecture, uh, cuisine, custom festival, historical sites, uh, nightlife, is an area in shopping, all those things, um, it's what's make a city. Also, there are some other important things that we can consider uh, very important too. Um, and the activity that we're going to be developing about this is uh, describing your own city. Uh, we are going to be working um, individually. That means that um, all of you are going to create a paragraph in order to describe your city. If you uh, live in, in San Salvador, uh, so you can describe San Salvador, all the things that uh, this city um, has, and uh, what are the things that you consider can be included in this, in, in this uh, well, that you can include in this paragraph, okay? That you have in that city. If you don't have, for instance, um, well, nightlife, because there are, there are some cities that we don't have like nightlife. Uh, so we have to meet that part and maybe we can include some other things. Um, that's what we're going to be uh, working on. And um, well, this is just um, an information that we can take into account in order to create our own paragraph. Try to do it uh, the best way you can because uh, I will be asking you to read uh, your description. Um, is it clear what I'm saying? Yes. Teacher. Yes, yes, teacher. Tell me, sir. Miss. Yes. Thomas. Teacher, um, sorry, what's the meaning of cuisine? Cuisine that means like uh, the, the, the dishes that we have on, on our city. Like, uh, well, things that... that like that we can find just in that place. 
Ah, okay. Reference to food. And to food, okay. And what's the meaning of a scenery? A scenery. Um, well, how, how, it, how this city looks like. Okay, oh, it looks okay. like a no city, like a modern city, something like that. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, any other question? Uh, I, 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 um, I think that Miss Gomez, you again? Not the chair, no. Sorry. No. Okay. Uh, someone was trying to open uh, his microphone, but I didn't notice who. Um, do you have any question? Any no, teacher. I just I just was trying to say, to tell you that uh, Rachel has your uh, ah, hand. her hands raised. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so um, you're going to have 10 minutes. Do you think that's enough time to the, to create your paragraph? Yes or not? Yes? Okay, yes. yes. Okay, very good. Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. What about the rest? Ms. Galdames? Yes, yes, that's right. Ms. Mina, okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, well, I think that if you keep muted, that means that you agree with that time. Uh, well, we're going to have 10 minutes. That means that at 8.32, uh, we're going to start, uh, we're going to stop and start reading uh, our description. Okay, see you in a moment.
We had just three minutes. Mr. Torres, are you ready? Yes, teacher, I'm ready. Okay, we're good. We're going to wait just uh, uh, and let's see what is ready. Ms. Garcia, you finish? Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. Um, let me know when you finish, okay? I'm finished. Okay, very good. I, fin thank you. I finished, teacher. Okay, thank you, Miss Gomez.
Okay, time is over. Uh, we're going to start with this activity and we are going to see, let, let me, let me choose someone, um, Mr. Torres. Okay, you're gonna be the first one. Okay, great. My city is Santa Tecla. Okay. Okay, Santa Tecla is a great place to live and visit. You can find an historical building near the downtown. Girola's house used to be a home for the children with a family. And also the city has two parks, Daniel Hernandez and San Martin. You can go shopping at Plaza Merliot and also eat something at the same place. You can visit Paseo del Carmen with your family and enjoy national cuisine like pupusas and tamales on weekends. Also, there is nightlife to enjoy with family and friends with places like restaurants and bars with live music. The cities have an historical sport place like El Café Talón, where during generation people go to do exercise and spend time with family and friends who love sports and family, familiar spaces. Okay, very good, excellent, good, good description, sir. Very good. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, let's see now to Ms. Garcia. Okay. I live in San, in San Salvador. There okay. are many good, for example, here you have near the supermarket, hospital, mm -hmm. movies, restaurant with different cuisines. Here are several malls where you can go to the shopping and for the people who like the nightlife, here is the perfect city. There are also a lot of traffic in the neighborhood don't have a no parking lot. Oh, Only. Just that, very good, excellent, good. Okay, uh, let me see Mr. Uh, Hernandez, you have your hand raised, tell me. Good evening, Mr. So, well, I'm gonna to um, say my description about Leon City. Leon City is located in, Nicar in Nicaragua. And this city have a interesting archit architecture because have a lot of churches. Like uh, the Colonial Church is located in the downtown of, from the city. Um, this city have a interesting cuisine Quincendas is located in the in the main street parts and have a good um, stick and yuca mm -hmm. and another type of cuisine. With the festivals, he celebrate the um, traditional festivals like a uh, Holy Week and. The Independence Day that celebrated in that city and have a lot, of, a lot, a lot of historical sites like um, um okay the, um, the volcano the um lion volcano is located in the in the outside of the downtown. The, and this city have a good nightlife because um, we have to walk on the street and all the downtowns and colonies have a restaurants, discotheques, and a lot of bars that you have to stay here. And the shopping and scenery is, um, you can enjoy shopping in the street, in the main street businesses. And you have a, there are cheaper business and a cheaper stores that you, you have to um, buy a craft and customs and a lot of clothes that you have to have been interesting. And this is my description, Mr. Okay, okay, very good, excellent. Uh, well, thank you, sir. Congratulations. Uh, well, we're going to continue with Miss uh, Mira. 
Ready? Just a moment, please. I, I, oh. I changed plate. I, I had to change plates because my family was there and I. I okay, okay, okay. I, I decided to change, but I'm ready. Okay. So. Um, I, I live in Santa Tecla, which is a city located near El Salvador's capital, San Salvador. Um, this city has many historical sites to visit, especially at city town where there are many houses with uh, architectural characteristics of the 19th century. For example, the city hall is a very beautiful building with architecture that is an example of city history. Nowadays, it is also known for the street festivals every day at Paseo del Carmen, where people can taste the typical cuisine buy souvenirs and walk through the streets and learn about their customs. Uh, in the past, Santa Tecla was known because of its pleasant weather, but at present it has lost this characteristic. Um, let me see, I lost my page. I was reading and I lost. Um, it, it has lost this characteristic um, because of the cutting, uh, the tree cutting down to be more and more uh, houses since mm -hmm. it's a very popular place to live. That's all. Okay, very good, very good. Um, well, let's listen to Ms. Caldames. Uh, San Salvador is one of the most beautiful cities in El Salvador. It has many places with different architecture expressions, such as the Cathedral of San Salvador, National Palace, among others. We have a variety of, of cuisine. If you visit San Salvador, you can eat food from all over the world, Chinese, Italian, Mexican, and of course. Hello. Can you listen here, guys? Of course, our delete. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, okay. I can. I can hear you. Okay. 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 Very good. Excellent. So, so the thing is. Uh, um, I don't know why, but I, I couldn't listen. Uh, it was a moment that I couldn't listen to. But go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, the nightlife is the most amazing expression that people enjoy our city. You can explore a lot of places in Zona Rosa and find out all the entertainment we offer to visitors. Uh, shopping in our mall is the same experience as buying in the States but with with a higher price. That's all. Okay, very good. Amazing. Good job. Um, well, who, who was missing? Ms. Gomez, do you already participate? No, teacher. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. And uh, my city is Santana. Santana is a small city where you can visit some historical sites like the cathedral, the national theater, or the town hall that are considered national monuments. Some important festivals or celebrations are the Fiestas Julias that are celebrated, celebrated in July in honor of Senora Santa Ana. In these celebrations, there are different parades and parties that people can go. Also in the whole city, you can enjoy some different places that offer uh, some cuisines like empanada de platano or pastelito de picado, also nuegalos and panes chupos with horchata. Okay, okay, very good, excellent. Um, well, let's see who else, Miss uh, Peraza. Yes, teacher. Okay, I live in Tapango. Okay. It's a municipality of El Salvador. 
Um, it is located in the center of the parson of San Salvador. Uh, it is the second most popular city in San Salvador, which is commonly known as the industrial city. Uh, mm -hmm. Also in Sepango, there are shopping centers such as has Plaza Mundo, Unicentro, uh, Plaza Sepango, and Plaza Venecia. And that's all, teacher. That's all. Yes. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, who's missing, Mr. Mendoza? Hello, teacher. Uh, also, sorry, uh, I just uh, login to my class. And I got uh, the idea to the exercise. But okay. uh, I, uh, I don't have it right now. You don't have it yet? Uh, no, teacher. Uh, I listened to the, my Lesson and I try to the identify the idea about the exercise. Okay, very good. So go ahead, go ahead, and and, and then I will ask you. Okay, let let's ask to uh, who's missing, Miss Garcia. Oh no, yes, you you already participated, right? Uh, yes. Okay, who's missing? Uh, Mr. Vasquez, okay, thank you, thank you. So, okay, thank you, teacher. Um, okay, San Marcos is located south of San Salvador. It is a small but crowded city, as many cities of El Salvador. It has a special architecture or historical sites, although it, it has some nice sceneries, especially because of the hills which surround the city. Until three years ago, the city had just a few choices to go shopping, but now there is, there is a mall and other stores nearby. In April, because of the festivities in honor of the Apostle San Marcos, there are carnivals and a fair. You can enjoy nightlife with friends and family. There you can find some typical food for that occasion, like Spanish Churros? I don't know how to okay. say that. It's okay. To, it, it's okay to say in that way. Okay, thank you. That's all? Yes, yeah, teacher. Thank you. Okay, very good. Excellent. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, well, Mr. Mendoza, you are the last one. So. I don't know if someone is missing, someone else? Nobody else, right? Well, Mr. Mendoza, are you ready? Yes, no? Uh, no, teacher, no. No, no, okay, we're going to uh, go to the next uh, topic. Then uh, please let me know when you finish and, and, and then I will give you any space in order to participate, Mr. Um, uh, right now I'm going to uh, show you something that's about the next topic that has as a title, um, Orders of Modifiers. I, I don't know if you know what are modifiers. Do you know what are modifiers? Uh. Maybe adjectives. Adjectives. Okay. What else? Any other? Um, any other comment about it? Modifiers. What do you know about modifiers? Okay, guys, now one. 
the minister said that are adjectives, okay? What else we can uh, say about modifiers? Nothing. Okay, let me, um, mm, let me make, show make. you. Mister, tell me. Yeah, no, I don't know, maybe a word to change or alter, or alter something, a definition or, or something like that. Yes, um, well, a, a modifier, it's a word, a, can be a phrase, a, or can be a, um, a sentence, a sentence, a, a sentence that's work um, like in a, in, as a class of, of, of a, any a structure, in this case in English, a, that has the purpose of modify something. Okay, uh, in the case of modifier, um, we have in, in this case, um, a classifications of it. Um, this, in this case, a modifier, it can be considered like an optional element uh, to complement any phrase structure, okay, or class of structure in this case. And what happened here? A modifier, the, the, the same, uh, the same uh, word sets that modify something um, can be, uh, for instance, um, an adjective, okay, that acts as a modifier, or um, any word that provide any extra information in detail about a, any particular thing. Um, for instance, uh, we have um, sometimes articles, okay? We have sometimes uh, something that, that, that identify uh, a specific thing in shape uh, or something that sometimes can be uh, identified as, uh, as adjective like colors, uh, the origin of some things. Okay, all those elements as a category. And let me show you something here. Let me show you something here in order to explain you in a better way this part. Because um, I want to, I want you to, um, I want you to work in an exercise about this. Just give me a second here and here. Okay, check it out. This is the information that I have, well, and you have uh, in the platform about orders of modifier. If you notice here, um, in this case, we are going to use this order in order to uh, create a phrase with modifiers. And also we are going to use this order. Uh, when we have a phrase, like a noun phrase or something like that, uh, the first thing that we have to include is the determiner. The second thing is the opinion. Then the size, the age, the shape, the color, the origin, the material, and the purpose of it about uh, something, in this case, the noun uh, is the last one, because the noun is who is receiving the adjectives, all the adjectives that we're going to use with, this, the, the, with these modifiers, okay? When we're talking about a uh, determiner, it says that um, it, uh, help us to identify um, if the adjective that we are going to use is singular or plural, if it is definite or indefinite, if it is next or far. Uh, in this case, we have um, some example here, some example here, like uh, a car that we are using the determiner uh, A, that's mean that 
the car is singular because just one. Uh, the same happened with an apple, um, the book, the flowers, uh, this man, that woman, these computers, those t-shirts. Oh, if you notice all those um, words are called determiners. Uh, the determiner, uh, let us identify that. If something is plural uh, or if something is singular, if something is definite or if something is indefinite. What are the definite or an indefinite uh, determiners? Do you know that? Definite and indefinite. Yes, no? No. No teacher. No, okay, let me explain you this. In the case of singular and plural, you know, right? Uh, if we had one, it's singular. If we have two or more, it's plural. We know that, right? Okay, yes. Yes, okay. In the case of definite and indefinite, um, it's what uh, we didn't, if we can identify the amount of something, okay? Of the number or the number of something. Like definite means that if we have two apples, we are referring to two apples. In the case of indefinite, uh, we are using we are, we use it uh, because we don't know the amount of somethings or the number of somethings. If I say the the apples, okay, the apples, but we don't know how how many apples do I, do I have, okay? Could be three, it could be five. It could be uh, seven, uh, well, we, we can uh, say that in that way, uh, like indefinite, indefinite articles, okay? Or in this case, determiners. Uh, the indefinite, we don't know the, the nouns. Uh, when we're talking about next or far, we also use determiners uh, uh, for it, and we can, uh, we can use it in this case, to identify if something is close to us or if something is so far away from us. If I say uh, this apple, this apple, okay, and I have it in my hand, this apple, that's mean that it's close. In the word this, that's the determiner because uh, it's letting me know that the, the, the item that I'm referring to is close to me. But if I say that apple, in this case, um, I can identify that if I use the determiner that the item is so far from me. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it clear in that way? Yes, it's sense? clear. Okay. Um, well, uh, we're going to stop here because the, the, this information is so extensive and we're going to see it tomorrow. Uh, but uh, the homework that you're going to have for tomorrow is to, um, um, is to find information about the modifiers. Uh, read that information, uh, bring some examples to the class because tomorrow I'm going to be asking you about this. It's not necessary that you write something. It can be just a, a, a reading about this, the, the modifiers. And so if you find relevant information or something that you want to share with us, it will be so good for tomorrow's class. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes, teacher, it's yes, clear. Teacher. Yes, it's clear. Okay, very good. So, guys, um, that's all for tonight. Uh, I will be seeing you. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, in the same time, uh, that's mean at uh, eight o'clock. And um, if you have any questions, so this is the right time in order to let me know. If not, I will close the video conference.
No question uh, no, for no me. No question to answer. Okay, very good. Thank you, thank you. So uh, then I'm going to close the video conference, guys. Uh, I wish you a nice night and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye and blessings for thank all of you. you. Good night thank for you. everyone. Good, sure. good, good night, everyone. Thank you, teacher.